The Challenge of the Yukon. Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The two men standing behind the protection of a huge boulder formation stamped their feet in the snow. One of them held a rifle. As he eased it over his arm, he rubbed his hands together for warmth. Much more of this waiting, this trigger finger of mine will be stiff with cold. He'll be along any minute now. Yeah, sure. Joe said he'd be passing here and that we were to be here waiting when he did, so shut up. Your cut out of this will be enough to make you forget the cold anyway. It better be. Hey, look up the trail. That must be him now. It's about time. You ready? I've been ready for the last hour. Good. Get him as he comes by. Drop them now. Come on before them dogs run off. Ho, you huskies! Ho! You got them all right. I want to get a look at them pelts. Hey, look at these foxes. Yeah. Joe knew what he was talking about, all right. I'll take the old timer sled and you take ours. We'll head back to town. By the time we get there, it'll be dark. All right. Come on. Marsh your huskies! A short time later, a light snow began to fall, blanketing the trail and the motionless figure of the old trapper. It was then that Sergeant Preston approached the boulder formation, and as he reached it, the Maori called to his team. Yes, fella, I see him. Hmm. It's Dan Snyder, a trapper from up in the hill country. <laughs> yes, King, he's dead. I'd say he was shot about an hour ago. We'll get him on the sled and take him back into town. No tracks around. The snow would take care of covering the road. Oh, but... oh. Hi there, stranger. You having trouble? Maybe I can... <laughs> Hello there, Sergeant. I didn't recognize you at first. Mm, Pete, how are you? Fine. What, what happened? It's Stan Snyder. He's been murdered. Murdered? Yes. Know anything about it? Not me. I just happened along. Making a run from Center City. I'm due at the office inside of a half hour. You're still working for Joe Simon, eh? Yep. Driving freight. Joe's going to be mighty sorry to hear this. Seems like he had some kind of an agreement with Snyder to drive his furs the rest of the way for him after he reached town. I see. Well, if I can't do anything for you, Sergeant, I'll be on my way. Got a schedule to keep. I'll see you in town, please. Yeah, too bad about Snyder. Well, that's the way. See you later. Hush, you husky! Hush! Come on, boy. Get him on the sled. I'd hope to put a stop to these trail murders and robberies up here. There. Too bad I didn't get here sooner. All right, fella. On King! On your man! Arriving in the small town of Three Forks, Pete Wallace went immediately to the office of Joe Simon's freight line. Oh, uh, Pete, you're late. Wait till you hear why I'm late. Hi, Len. Charlie? Hi, Pete. Hello, Pete. You fellas got Dan Snyder. That's right. He did pretty good this season, too. You ought to get a look at some of the pelts we brought in. Never mind that. How come you're late? I met Preston on the trail. The Mountie? Yeah. 
I didn't know he was up here. I figured maybe you'd be interested in knowing. Yeah. What brings him to this neck of the woods? If Marty's poison once he gets wind of something. <laughs> There's no use getting edgy. He ain't got a thing on us. Like everybody else, he thinks we just run a freight line. Maybe so. But he ain't one to let murder go without trying to find out what's behind it. I'd like to have a dollar for every man that swung because Preston got on his trail. What are you getting at? When I met that Mountie, he was kneeling beside Snyder, looking at the bullet wound. Beside Snyder? That's right. He'll stop in here when he's in town to see you, Joe. And if he had any inkling there was any stolen furs around, he'd take this place apart. We've got to get rid of him fast. Now, there ain't only Snyders to think about. There's the ones we got from McCready last week. The Winslows are still in the back room. For me, I'm taking my pay and getting out of town. Shut up, all of you. Where'd you drop Snyder, Len? Where you told us to, by the boulder. Then Preston will be in town any minute. You ain't going to find me here. I'm leaving. You can pay me now, Joe. You ain't going to go nowhere. This is where I tell you to. Now listen to me. You're going to load them pelts on sleds, you understand? Who's going to load them? All of you. You'll all take a sled and get out of town, see? Go north. Same way Preston came in. Only take the back trails. Yeah? But if we're going to get rid of them pelts, we got to go to Seahorse. You're going north. He won't backtrack. There are enough provisions in the back room to last you a couple of days. Stay in one of them caves with the cliffs. Then one of you come into town. Then I'll let you know what to do. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'll be here to meet Preston. Now get going. You too, Pete. This is one case that Mountie will never crack. A short time later, Sergeant Preston was in Joe Simon's office. I'm convinced that this is just one of a series of robberies, all of them with the same purpose. Well, it's a mystery to me. Dan uh, sure didn't have any enemies. The motive was robbery as it was with all the others. It isn't safe anymore for a trapper to drive his furs to a trading post. Uh, what do you plan to do, Sergeant? Make a thorough investigation here in town. And uh, if the pelts don't turn up? Then it's just possible that the murderers have a hideout somewhere in this vicinity. Hmm, well, if the boys was here, maybe they could help you. They know this territory like the palm of their hands. But they had other runs to make. I'll find the men responsible for this no matter how long it takes. You know, I had an idea you might know if anyone brought some pelts into town. Mm, no, I, I stick pretty close to the office, Sergeant. <laughs> I wish you luck, but I'm afraid I can't be of much help. Sergeant Preston spent the rest of the day and the beginning of the next combing the town for some clue to the murders. Finding none, he returned to Joe Simon's office. Well, whoever did it, maybe they went straight through to Seahorse, Sergeant. No, Seahorse was two days' journey from here, Joe. Any stranger passing through would have to rest his dogs or pick up supplies. And even if he were to drive through, he'd have been seen and remembered. Mm, yeah, I guess you're right. Ain't many strangers coming in, but I still think... I'm going that... back to that boulder formation. There's a hideout either to the north or south of here, and I'm going to find it. Well, if that's the case... <laughs> I'll go with you. What about the freight line? Oh, that can get along without me for a few days. Maybe I can be of some help to you. Well, let's get started, Sergeant. Several miles north of town, the three men, Pete, Len, and Charlie, sat in a cave that was a storehouse of rich furs. Pete was looking at what was left of their supplies. Bacon. Beans and bacon yeah, for the there last... ain't no more beans, so you can forget about them. I haven't eaten nothing but bacon for the last three weeks. Every time I go out on a run, that's all I get. What are you complaining about? Hey, how about some caribou steak? What's wrong with taking our rifles and trying to drop one of them? Yeah, that's a good idea. It's the best place for hunting them, too. I'll go with you. What about you, Len? Uh, I think I'll try my luck, too. <laughs> Been a long time since I'd done any of that kind of shooting. One of the three of us ought to be able to get one. Come on. Pete. 
the three men left the cave. And when they returned, they looked in amazement at the tracks showing in the snow. Why, it's a grizzly. He was here, but he's gone now. Tracks when he went in and came out. What would he be doing? The pelts. Maybe he got into them. Hmm. Looks like he didn't bother him. Yeah, that's mighty funny. Why would... <laughs> well, boys, looks like you ain't going to complain about eating bacon from now on. What? Matter of fact, it looks like you ain't going to eat anything but caribou. So that's it, huh? That grizzly cleaned up every last bit of the bacon. Sergeant Preston and Joe Simon traveled the back trails. This looks like a hopeless job to me, Sergeant. I don't know about that. Remember those tracks we saw back along the trail? Yeah, we lost them a mile back. Snow's covered them completely. Nevertheless, we're going to keep going. On King! On your Malamute! Running ahead of Sergeant Preston's team of Malamutes, the great dog King frowned momentarily to himself. He tilted his nose in the clear Yukon air, and his perplexity increased. He caught the scent of a grizzly bear on the trail ahead. Sighting the huge animal ahead on the trail, King stopped. Sergeant Preston also saw the bear. All right, fella. Hold your mother, Newt. You going to kill him, Sergeant? No, we'll wait and see if he attacks. I guess he thought the better of it. All right, boy. On King! On you, Malamute! It was then that King realized why the scent of the bear brought with it another scent, the heavy, greasy scent of bacon. The Malamute knew that somewhere the grizzly had looted the rations of a camper. He knew, too, that it was but a short time ago. King! On, King! From his master's past conversation, King understood they were traveling a man. Was it possible that the man they were trailing had carried bacon in his pack? It was worth investigating, but no time could be wasted if they were to backtrack along the trail the grizzly had taken. The snow was falling and would soon cover the tracks. The Malamute turned to the timber. Sergeant Preston, riding the runners of the sled, gave the dog his head, following his lead. As they approach the cliffs, Joe Simon turns suddenly in the mounty sled. I've seen as much as I... I wouldn't raise that gun if I were you, Joe. Yeah. What's the idea? You might say I anticipated your draw. Drop your gun in the snow. Now we'll just go on letting King lead the way. My gun will be within easy reach. Remember that. Looks like this is the end of the trail. Hold you, Malamute! Now walk ahead of me, Joe, and if you're wise, you won't attempt to signal to your men. I don't get this, Sergeant. What made you think that I had a We'll big... explain that later. Hey, it's a boss. He figured it was you when we heard the dogs, boss. We... Raise your hands, all of you. Which Preston? What's the idea of leading him here? I thought you Shut were... up. I didn't lead him here. No, you didn't lead me here. But you took me off when we were getting near the cave. So this is the hideout, eh? Are there enough furs here to... Don't reach for that gun, Pete. Oh, right. You're under arrest, all of you. You win, Preston. I'd like to know one thing. How'd you know I was mixed up in this? When I was making my investigations in town, your men were seen to leave with three loaded sleds. Sleds loaded with furs, and they left town by a back trail. So that was it, huh? I knew Pete had just returned from a run, and he wouldn't start out immediately on another one, unless it were very important for him to be out of town. But you didn't know where he went. You acted like you had a compass or a map. The king deserves the credit for that. What gave him the clue is something I'll never know. Yes, fellow, thanks to you, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan...